How's it going guys? My name is Graham and welcome to Two Left Thumbs. A lot of people are searching for Jackbox right now. They have a lot of sales going on, so I wanted to continue working backwards and reviewing all of the party packs. For anyone generally unfamiliar with the series, Jackbox is a series of party games hosted on a singular device that everyone else can play along with on either their phones, tablets, or even laptops. It's as simple as opening up a browser, so only one person actually needs the game, and there's no need to download or install additional apps. The ease of access and party game structure is really what make the series great. The Jackbox team has even recently published a video on their own official channel showing people how they can play the series over Google Hangouts. We actually did it just the other night, it worked great. If one person has a Jackbox game on their PC, and everyone has Gmail accounts of some kind, it's incredibly easy to get set up and start playing together remotely. The Party Pack 2 comes with Fibbage 2, Earwax, Bidiots, Quiplash XL, and Bomb Corp. I'm going to start with Fibbage 2 and Quiplash XL because they really are the bread and butter of the game. They've also really become mainstays and cornerstones of the series at large. Quiplash 2 is in Party Pack 3, Fibbage 3 is in Party Pack 4, and Quiplash 3 is coming up in Jackbox 7. These are also really the only two games that seem to support streamer functionality. Audience members can join in over Twitch streams and things like that, and cast their own votes that don't really have a major effect on the game. It's a good way to tie in other players, but this is early on in Jackbox starting to adopt streamer functionality, so it just really wasn't made with that in mind. First up, let's look at Fibbage 2, which is made for 2 to 8 players. In Fibbage, you're presented with a small phrase, short story, or a little anecdote with a piece missing. Everyone independently submits their own lie as to what that blank could be. While there's a temptation to try to be funny, the goal is to be believable. You will earn points by fooling other players to choose your answer. You can also earn more points by correctly guessing the actual answer. Each player is eventually given a defibrillator, which will narrow down the options for you if you're having a particularly tough time on a given vote. The game is simple, fun, challenging, it's a good excuse to be both witty and creative. There's a reason that it's made it into three separate packs. Next up is Quiplash, this time for three to eight players. The original Quiplash is something that was released in between the Party Pack 1 and 2. So Quiplash XL is that release, plus the DLC that adds a bunch of additional prompts. So if you already have the standalone Quiplash, then that might factor into your decision, but a hundred extra prompts really does expand the game. You're much less likely to get those repeats even when you play this a lot. People are given a very broad prompt, they then have to submit a funny answer, and everyone casts a vote on which they think was more funny of the two. Very simple concept, infinite room for creativity. Quiplash has very much always been the who is more funny game of Jackbox. I know a lot of people are often looking for a more laid back experience. There's a lot of pressure that comes along with trying to be the funniest one in the room. Now and again, a prompt does not give you a lot to work with. You're going to be hearing a lot of crickets chirping. But the concept overall is so freeform. I've been playing Jackbox for at least five years now, and on any given party pack night, we always bust out Quiplash or Quiplash 2 at least a few times. Even if you don't feel particularly funny, you'll start to develop your own inside jokes within a given session, and you can start to play off those a little bit. So even if something isn't objectively funny, you as a group are still going to have a lot of laughs. In the final round, everyone is given the exact same prompt, and once again, it's simply a matter of voting for which you thought was best. It's simply a free-for-all instead of the usual head-to-head. -head. Next is Bidiots, made for three to six players. They put a cap on the number of players here, because by the nature of the game, things build up very quickly, and they're slightly drawn out depending on people's playstyle, and it would just become unwieldy if you included too many players. So while it is somewhat limiting, it's a very effective game design choice. I feel like this is really a dark horse of the pack. I think a lot of people don't give it a lot of credit. Everyone loves Drawful, and while this isn't quite the same, it truly is a spiritual successor and will give you joy in a lot of the same ways. The premise here is that you're attending an art auction. Every player is starting with $3,000. Everyone will be given two separate prompts on their device and they have to draw pictures to go along with each. The tricky part is that people will get extremely similar prompts. One person may get swimming in the pool, another may get an Olympic swimmer, yet another might get lifeguard, and one more will get swimming in the ocean. Odds are you're going to end up with four different people either in or near water. Due to the limited color palette and thick lines, people can't really add that much detail, and so these differing prompts are probably going to end up with four extremely similar pictures. That is absolutely the point of the game. Once the auction begins, everyone will be given three random pieces of insider knowledge, the precise worths of three separate paintings. It will refer to the paintings by name, which you will never be given during the auction. 
you instead are gonna have to make on the fly decisions of whether or not that picture looks closer to getting a tan or sunburn. I really love the metagaming here. People go out of control bidding for something they think is worth four grand when really it's only worth 600, while someone secretly at the table knows the real worth of it. Maybe you try to upbid people a little bit because you were the artist behind the drawing. Whatever the sell price on a drawing is, the artist will get a percent commission. Not on its worth, rather what it was sold for. Inevitably, as you're buying up pieces of art, you will run out of money. When that happens, you can come in for predatory loans, the best part of the game. They'll hand you $1,000, but at the end of everything, you owe them $1,500. Winners are calculated at the end of the game. Your remaining cash, plus the worth of the art that you purchased, minus any predatory loans you took out. So buying cheap and selling high and earning fat commission are very important. There's also a few other random fun things in the game. Halfway through, you earn the ability to screw another player, which commits them to a bid, barring that they have enough cash to do so. Everyone's individual wealth is not public knowledge, so sometimes you end up wasting a screw. Plus, everyone is going to have their own individual art curator that is sending them unique tweets on their device. They're just these little prompts that show up at the bottom of the screen. Most of them are sharing life events and other useless information, but once or twice per game, they will give you valuable updates, like player two knows the exact value of this next piece, then you can keep a close eye on their bidding habits. It just add a lot of personality and it's very fun to keep a little side eye on. It's kind of like strategic drawful rather than funny drawful, although you're still gonna hoot and holler when someone spends three grand on something that's worth nothing. If Bidiots is the dark horse, Earwax is the dead horse. It's made for three to eight players and it's like Cards Against Humanity, but with sounds? One player is selected as the judge, they choose between two random categories, that category is then presented to all the other players. They have a selection of six random sound effects that they get to choose from on their screen. The real difficulty here is that you're going off the description of a sound effect, you don't actually really get to hear it before picking it, so maybe things really don't come out how you intended. Each player selects two sound effects in whatever order they choose as a reply to the category they were given. The judge then gets to decide what gave them the biggest laugh or which they thought fit best. Whoever they select gets a point, first the three points wins. I personally am not a fan of Cards Against Humanity, and in a lot of ways this is Cards Against Humanity done worse. The sound effects are weird, it very rarely comes out how you want it to, I almost never find it funny, there's almost no room for creativity. Maybe there are people out there who like this game, but it has been a running joke in our group for years now that Earwax is probably one of the all-time worst Jackbox games. Kind of like Jimmy Kimmel cutting Matt Damon for time, all night we'll joke about playing Earwax at the end, and then ah shoot, I, I gotta get home, I got work in the morning. And we have Bomb Corp at the end, made for one to four players, and I specifically save it for the end because it's probably the least Jackboxy game across any of the party packs. And that is not a bad thing. Something like Zeeple Dome in Party Pack 5 was not a Jackbox game, and it was awful. Bomb Corp similarly differs from the usual formula. There's no game show theme setting everything up. It's also about being creative, funny, answering trivia, silly drawing games, or, or trying to lie or outwit anyone. This one has an unexpected pixel art style and a framework of you being an employee at a bomb factory that has to defuse a bomb. It's entirely cooperative. It feels a little bit like Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, but maybe a little bit simpler, and it has the frantic shouting qualities of something like Space Team. One player is in charge of cutting wires and deactivating the bomb, everyone else has a series of convoluted instructions that they have to try and communicate and work through together. The instructions are going to be unclear or incomplete, sometimes conflicting. By talking through it together you decide which rules supersede others, and try to get through it all before things blow up in your face. As you advance to further rounds, things get more complicated. I also like the fact that you can technically play this one by yourself, although you're gonna get a lot more out of it with a group. It is limiting in that it maxes out with four players, but usually when I've ended up playing this one, we try to get five or six people together, people have to leave at different points throughout the night, and suddenly you have the perfect amount for Bomb Corp. It's very high energy, it's exciting, it's different, it's challenging, and I think it's a great argument for why the party pack should continue to take more risks like this. Given that I'm doing this review much later, we're doing it with the benefit of knowing what came in future packs. If Fibbage specifically sounds the most interesting to you, your best bet is going to be the party pack 4. The game is expanded and has a subset secondary game mode that is also very fun. If Quiplash is what excited you the most, then I would probably recommend the party pack 3. Both of those packs are a little bit more well-rounded, but if you only want to buy one pack and you want Fibbage and Quiplash, Jackbox 2 is going to be the only place to get it. In conclusion, Fibbage 2, Quiplash XL, 
fantastic games. Always have been, pretty much always will be. Idiots, maybe it depends what you're into, but I would really recommend it to anyone. You don't have to be a good drawer, you don't have to be funny. I feel like anyone can really get into this one if they give it a chance. It's just that the concept is a little weird to wrap your mind around at first. The limited number of players might be a hang up for people for Bomb Corp, but it really does mix up your evening quite well, as long as people are willing to step up and be a little energetic with things. Earwax is trash and probably should have never existed. Do not, for any means, factor earwax into your decision. I think I've played two rounds of it ever and will happily never touch it again. I think that's everything I have to share about the Party Pack 2. I'll have a link to the end cards here to a playlist of all of my Party Pack reviews. I still haven't done the Party Pack 1, but that should be coming soon. Thank you guys so much for watching, stay safe out there, and I hope to see you again soon.